And the travels of Paul according to D100, the way it's listed is what's called in your Bibles on chapter 9, is conversion. The conversion of Saul. Now, one of the things I want to say about Saul and Paul is this is not like Abram and Abraham, or Sarah and Sarah. Uh, Saul doesn't get a new name. Saul is his Jewish name. Paul is his Roman name. So he doesn't get a replacement name. Okay? So Saul and Paul are referred to as the same person. But uh, it's not a name change as such. I don't know if you knew that or not. Um, and then when we look at his conversion on that road to Damascus, up until this time, Paul has been a persecutor of the Christians. He will write in his letters that, uh, you know, he took them out. He had them thrown in prison. He voted for them to die because they were Christians. And on this road to Damascus, something happened. He does, we don't know what. He doesn't tell us what the encounter with Jesus was. But from this point on, it was a total change in his life. Um, this is often called the conversion of Paul. And in most of your Bibles, that's probably the heading that's over this in chapter 9, the conversion of Paul, or of Saul. And uh, I'm not sure conversion is really a good word. Paul certainly changed, but normally when we talk about a conversion, we go from one religion to another religion. He converted from this to that. But Paul really didn't convert. He continued his Jewish understandings and beliefs, but what he did was expand those beliefs to now include Jesus. And so he's not starting a new religion, and he's not after starting something totally new and different. But again, the continuation of the whole narrative of Scripture continues with Jesus. So I think sometimes conversion kind of gives the instance of now he's no longer Jew, that's old, throw that away and go to the new. Paul didn't throw it away, he continued it on. And so Jesus is a continuation of what's begun in the Old Testament, not a new beginning of something totally different. Any questions about that or comments? Yeah, I'm sure. Not a question, but I did read that when uh, Paul went into the synagogue and he was rapped, where he would start preaching to the soon as the Jews start preaching you know, about the Old Testament when he was into the Old Testament. Right. Yeah, in Acts, every time that Paul goes to a new place, he always preaches in the synagogues first before going to the Gentiles. And um, because he saw the message as being consistent. Now it's interesting in his letters, he never mentions that. He never talks about going to the synagogues to preach. But in Acts, every single time. And one of the things we need to understand about the book of Acts is it's written later than Paul's letters are written. So Paul has already kind of been out of the picture before Acts is written. So when Luke writes the book of Acts, we've got to figure we've got about a 20-year time difference. And so you have Paul's letters in which he recounts some things, and then you have the book of Acts in which it recounts things um, from Luke's point of view and the stories that he hears and his understanding, but not quite the same. There's, there's some nice little differences in there. But that's one of them. In Acts, every time, the continuation with the Jewish story continues. In Paul's letters, not so much. Yeah, thanks for that. Bill, you're going to say I was going to say, it sounds, to some extent, at least, similar to Jesus, who was continuing on through the yeah. Right. heritage. Right. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I just can't emphasize this enough, that there are too many Christians out there who want to throw away the Old Testament as being irrelevant. Because Christianity is a new religion started by Jesus. Jesus didn't come to start a new religion. He is continuing what God has begun from the very beginning. Now he gives new understanding to that, certainly. But he didn't just come to say, throw the old out, here I am. Let's do something new. Not at all. Um, I was just wondering, 
I feel great about it. <laughs> yeah, Messianic Jews are Jews that accept Jesus, but don't want to lose their Jewishness. Um, I have no problem with that at all. And in fact, some of what Acts talks about, especially when we get into the council, we get into last week, it would have been Peter's dream that he had, the vision he had with Cornelius, the centurion, in terms of who was, who was God for, the Gentiles come in, as well as Jews. The Jews had a tendency to be very restrictive in their viewpoint. And Paul, and Peter, the council in Jerusalem opened that up so that all people can be involved in that. So Messianic Jews want to keep their Jewishness and not throw it away because now they're Christians. I don't see an issue with that at all. But there's some real obstacles to Jewish people <coughs> accepting Jesus. There really are. It's, it's not just a natural kind of next step to that. So we have to be very patient. Other questions about Paul's conversion, so-called conversion? Um, that's a very familiar story. Now you know that after he was converted, he didn't just start going out and preach, did he? What happened after this road to Damascus? Remember what happens? Not going to find it in Acts. That's where you're looking. That's yeah, it. <laughs> you got, yeah, you got to, you're going to find it in Galatians. But in any case, yeah, a few years after his encounter with Christ, he goes to Arabia in Damascus in southern Syria. And in first in Galatians chapter one, you hear about that. And then after three years, he goes to Jerusalem. And he stayed with Peter for 15 days. And then he also met with James, the brother of Jesus. And then he went into the regions of Syria and spent more than 10 years there. So Paul, usually the way people think of Paul was he had this conversion experience and then immediately started his missionary journeys and all the rest. And what we've got to realize is there's probably at least a 13-year time span between he began that work and he's developing what I consider to be his theology. He's got to put all this stuff together. It didn't just happen at the snap of the finger that Paul gets all this information, all this understanding about Jesus, linking that with all of his Jewish upbringing, his good Pharisaic um, teachings that he had. And uh, he had to figure this out. And it took him a while to do it. It did not happen overnight. And I think sometimes we want things to happen quicker, quickly, this go. He, he sees Jesus, he gets it, he gets converted, he's got it, go tell it. And not really the way it happened with Paul. Quite a time frame shifts there. But then... Is it fair to say that it seemed like he was not too well connected with the inner circle? Of the Christians? Yeah, absolutely he not. He was on his own for quite a while. He wasn't connected at all with them. If anything, his only connection was he wanted to hunt him down. <laughs> so there was no connection that, that I know that he had with any of the disciples before that experience on the road in which he encountered Christ. Even after that, his experience on the road, kind of like Even after that, for quite a while. he had a couple short you know, the little stay in Jerusalem, and outside of that, he was gone for another 10 years. So basically, no. Now, that's not to say that he may not have had contact with some teachers or somebody who was around the area, but don't really know. Didn't hang out with Peter and Timothy. Didn't hang out with those guys. No. 
No, it's kind of interesting. And then when we get to um, the Council of Jerusalem in chapter 15, in which you have this great big gathering of people and they're going to decide do you have to be circumcised or not. 